Today, household financial confidence grinds lower again. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Today we look at the July 2018 results from our Household Financial Confidence Index. By way of background, these results are derived from our household surveys averaged across Australia. We have 52,000 households in our sample at any one time. We include detailed questions covering various aspects of a household's financial footprint. The index measures how households are feeling about their financial health. To calculate the index, we ask questions which cover a number of different dimensions. We start by asking households how confident they are feeling about their job security, whether their real income has risen or fallen in the past year, their view on their costs of living over the same period, whether they have increased their loans and other outstanding debts, including credit cards, and whether they're saving more than last year. Finally, we ask about their overall change in net worth over the past 12 months, and by net worth, we mean assets less outstanding debts. And by the way, if you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. Here is the link. And it's also in the comments below. The latest edition of the DFA Household Financial Confidence Index to the end of July 2018 remains in below average territory, coming in at 89.6 compared with 89.7 last month. We had expected a bounce this month. In fact, the rate of decline did slow, thanks to small pay rises for some in the new financial year and the refinancing of some mortgage loans to special rates on offer currently. However, the index at this level is associated with households keeping their discretionary spending firmly under control and the property grind is still impacting severely. Looking at the results by our property segmentation, owner-occupied households remain overall around the neutral reading, while property investor confidence continues to fall into territory normally associated with those who are renting or living with family. This signals significant risks in the property investment sector ahead. Owner-occupied property holders who have been able to refinance their lower loan-to-value loans have been able to shave their monthly repayments, while for some in rented accommodation, they have found it easier to find a rental at a lower price point. Investment property holders reported continued concern about servicing their loans and of potentially higher interest rates ahead. Those on interest-only loans were particularly concerned about their next reset review, given the tighter underwriting standards now in play. The peak of the resets, however, is well more than a year away. The spread of scores across the states continues to bunch as New South Wales and Victorian households react to lower home prices. WA continues to show little real recovery in household finance, despite the hype, although there was a small rise in Queensland thanks to recent pay lifts for some. Across the age bands, younger households remain the least competent, while those aged 50 to 60 years old were more bullish thanks to recent stock market lifts and access to lower rate refinance mortgages. The intergenerational dynamic is in full force with younger households not in the property market seemingly unable to access the market despite the recent incentives of New South Wales and Victoria, and those with property and a mortgage are wrestling with repayments. Looking in more detail at the index components, job security improved a little this month with 12.5% feeling more secure, up 0.67%, 27% less secure, down 0.92%, and those about the same at 58.8%, up 2%. However, we see many households in multiple part-time jobs, and around 20% of households are actively seeking more work or more hours. There was a small rise in those reporting an income improvement, thanks to changes which kicked in from July. 2.3% said their income had improved, up 1.5% from last month, while 43.7% said they'd stayed the same, and there was a drop of 2.2% of those reporting a fall in income to 50.5%. Households continue to see the cost of living rising, with 82.3% reporting higher costs, up 1%. 13% reported no change, and 2.5% saw their costs falling. 
The usual suspects included power bills, childcare costs, the price of fuel plus healthcare costs, and the latest round of council rate demands, as well as school fees. The reported CPI appears to continue to underreport the real experience of many households, and many continue to dip into their savings to pay the bills. In terms of debt outstanding, there was a small fall in those reporting that they were less comfortable, with 42% reporting compared with 44% last month. This is attributable to changes in interest rates and refinancing, especially for owner-occupied households with lower loan-to-income ratios. Many with large mortgages also have other debts, including credit cards and personal loans, which also require servicing. Around 52% reported no change in their debt, up 3.5%. Property investors were more concerned overall. Looking at savings, those with stocks and shares have enjoyed significant gains, at least on paper, with recent dividends as well, so tend to be more confident. Some were able to benefit from higher savings rates on selected term deposits, although rates attached to on-call accounts continue to languish as lenders manage their margins. Around a quarter of households have less than one month's spending in savings, so many are facing a hand-to-mouth situation with regard to their finances. And many of these households are in the younger age bands and have no savings to protect themselves should their personal situations change. We noted in the survey that a number of households were actively seeking alternative savings vehicles as property and bank deposits look less interesting. We have to see whether these alternatives are as attractive in terms of risk return as some are claiming. We have our doubts. But then, risk is relative. So putting this all together, the proportion of households who reported that their net worth was now higher than a year ago continues to slide as property price falls continue to hit home and as savings are raided to maintain lifestyle. 42% said their net worth had improved, down 3.75% from last month. 25.6% said their net worth had fallen, up 2.5% and 28% reported no real change. We had expected to see a small bounce in the index this month as some incomes were expected to rise in the new tax year and other changes were to take effect. But the impact of the fading property sector and cash flow constraints are likely to have dwarfed this impact. The only get out of jail card will be income growth above inflation and as yet there is little evidence of this occurring. Thus we suspect the long grind will continue. Finally, the spate of attractor rates from the banks continues in an attempt to keep mortgage volumes up. However, our research shows that many households cannot access them in the new, tighter lending environment. We will update the index again next month. Before we go, a quick reminder, mark your diary. The next DFA live stream event will be on Tuesday the 21st of August at 8pm Sydney. I will be providing more information shortly about the event, but it's already scheduled on the channel if you want to set a reminder and feel free to send questions in beforehand. If you value the content we produce, please do consider joining our Patreon program, where you can support our ability to continue to make great content. The link is in the comments below. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please share and like the post and add a comment or question. I read them all. And if you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting that subscribe bell. And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.